Hey guys, welcome back to Quiet to China. So today I'm feeling quite authentic and I dump the green screen, leaving me and nature. Today we're gonna learn how to composite 3D model to create an action VFX scene. So let's start by downloading a 3D model character from Sketchfab, where I'll search for Obi-Wan Kenobi 3D model, a character from the movie Star War. So luckily the search results turned out great with plenty of models to choose from. So for this model, I'll download the character that has no animation rig built in it. I'm alone, I'm so my next search will be the Star Wars Stormtrooper 3D character. And this time I'll enable the animation option since we need animation for this character. After scrolling through, I finally find a model with action rigging that's perfect for my 3D scene. If you're gonna leave, I'm gonna let you go. So the next step is applying action animation to the first model using the Mixamo Animation website. So before starting, you'll be asked to sign up using your Gmail or an Adobe account. And once you've signed up your account, you'll be shown a tab that displays a series of animation preset that you can easily apply to your 3D model simply by selecting them. This website also offers free character models that you can download and use for your animation projects. So I'm going to now upload the model that I'll be adding animation to. So in order to successfully add animation to your 3D model character, make sure your model is in a T-pose stance. This allow the website to easily analyze it and add animation without having error feedbacks. Next, I moved forward by typing the name of the animation type I want to apply to the model. The panel on the right side provides options where you can customize the animation style and add more precise timing to the animation. And the download section also offers custom settings for 3D model format, skin, frame rate, and keyframes. So lastly, I click the download button to download the model. So now that we are on Node Video Editor and with our background footage already in place, we're going to apply 3D camera tracking to analyze the footage camera movements. So I left the video frame rate unchanged and while I changed the resolution to 1080p and lastly click the analyze button to start tracking. So I also want to say a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters for making all this possible. Your support is what keeps us going. And if you'd like to join the crew and support our work, just head to the video description below for the link to our Patreon page. Now that the tracking is 100% complete, I'll find and select the track point area where I'll place the 3D model character. So if you're new to Node Video Editor and want to learn more about 3D camera tracking, check out this video description where I provide a full tutorial link for you. So after copying the track points data to transformation, I'll import the 3D character. After importing, I go to the Model Transformation option and paste the tracking data. Next, I resize the model to create a more fitting look with the background footage. To avoid unstable tracking, I'll move the model closer to the selected track point.
Now that I'm satisfied with the 3D model's position and size adjustments, I jump to the animation option, where we'll use the evolution property to add animation to the 3D character by adding keyframes from the start and end points of the action. So, to avoid confusion, I'm going to rename the model as Trooper. To make the character look more realistic, I duplicate the model to add shadow to the 3D character. I'll adjust the rotation to fit a shadow perspective and add a 3D camera to gain more control over the shadow model. Next, I go to the color correction properties and add the tint, then change the color of the map white to black. And lastly, reduce the opacity of the model. So let's take a look at the playback. You might notice that the shadows movement doesn't match the character. To fix this, I'll add keyframes to the shadows position to match the character's movement. Also add keyframes to the scale to change the shadow's size as the character moves. To further enhance the shadow, I'll add a mask to create a more faded look. Now that I'm satisfied with the result, here's a playback review. So since there's no tracking data on the model shadow, I manually track the movement using keyframes to match the tracking data. Next is compositing the VFX element. So I'll add the laser gunfire element and adjust it to fit my composition. I'll remove the black background by adding the blending and select the screen type. I then adjust the size of the laser to fit the gun size. I'll add keyframes to the position to create a gunfire motion. Since there are multiple gunshots I'll duplicate and composite the laser element to fit those shots.
Now that I'm done compositing the laser gun shots, I'll add an energy blaster to create the muzzle flare. So first I'm going to transform the energy blast effect to 3D. To remove the background, go to the material option and select pre-multiplied transparency and then reduce the opacity. I will arrange and composite the energy blaster similarly to the laser shots. So, moving forward, next we'll add the second 3D character to the action scene. So this time around I'll copy the tracking data as group. I'll then add the 3D model to the group folder. As usual, adjust it to fit the background perspective. I also move the model position closer to the selected track point. Once the desired position is achieved, I then add keyframes to the evolution property to add animation to the character. And here's a quick playback review. And next I'll composite the electric effect onto the model. So this time I'll apply 3D tracking to the VFX effect. And now I match the electric effect to the model by positioning it over the character. Finally adjust the size and position it to fit the composition. Next, I'll add a glow effect from the effect store and change the glow color to red. Then I tweak up the settings to bring out more lights details to the electric effect.
I then adjust the timing of the electric effect to match the action. So with the electric shock effect complete, let's bring in the explosion. So we'll use 3D tracking to anchor the effect. Let's adjust the explosion timing to hit just the right spot. And once it's done, I then paste the tracking data. I'll use the same process to remove the explosion background and then blend it into the scene. Next, I apply the shake effect to add more impact on the explosion. So we're going to use adjustment layer to achieve it. Trim and adjust the layer position to match the explosion's timing. And then next add the shake effect to the adjustment layer. So I'll reduce the amplitude or intensity of the shake effect. Then enable motion blur and do some few tweaks to the settings. And lastly, enable the tiling option. Finally, I'll blend the overall look of the footage by applying some film look grading to make the 3D scene more interesting and cinematic. Points in blaming you, you did not know oh. I thought you were the one for me That's So now that we are done color grading and compositing all the effects, here's a final playback review. So thanks for watching, and we hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you did, Kindly subscribe and hit the like button, and we'll see you next time. Peace.